So this is from Mario, but does anybody want to know how you go about determining someone's optimal squat or deadlift stance? Maybe this is Chris. Does that help you, brother? Say that question one more time. Okay, I got braces on, so it's hard for me to speak clearly. So how do you go about determining someone's optimal squat or deadlift stance? Um, there's no rules, first and foremost you have to determine what you want it to look like. So you have this picture in your head that you said that you call a squat and then within certain variations, you have an acceptable level of performance. There's really no rule. Um, if we go back to Corey's question about the heels elevated thing, and then we kind of use it in conjunction, um, Chris, with your previous question, when you have somebody that, that doesn't have what you would consider this pretty ideal squat that you're seeking, Sometimes you can alter foot, foot position. So a wider stance in some cases will allow some people to keep their heels down, but maybe it does affect their depth. And, and it's, I'm okay with you starting people just about anywhere that you deem safe. And so a lot of times, if I am just starting someone out, I put a box behind them and I tell them to sit down and I tell them to stand up. And people tend to put their feet where they can to perform whatever squat that they can perform. And that might be the best way to start. So they used to call it potty squatting where you just sit down as if you're getting up off the toilet. But if you start somebody from a seated position and have them stand up, they tend to put their feet where they need to, to perform a squat. And so you would start there. If you don't like that stance, but you're okay with them starting there, then you start to make the adjustments over time. So because there's not a right or a wrong necessarily, you, Again, use that picture that you have in your head and you work them towards that. So again, there are a number of ways that I can manipulate the center of gravity that will allow me to change that foot position, but there's nothing wrong with starting out people a little bit wider than you normally would. There's nothing wrong with, with starting people, you know, with their toes pointed out a little bit more than you normally would, as long as your intent is, is this is a progression. This is a, a merely a moment in time, and we're gonna to work towards something else. So we, we talk about minimum viable performance. So if I am trying to improve the performance of any aspect, in this case, a squat or a deadlift, in regards to, to stance, I'll just start them wherever I can and just say, okay, this is where we are today. And then I know where we wanna go. And then I try to make those adjustments along the way. So a lot of times I think people tend to overcoach a little bit and all you do is add to the frustration of the client because they're no longer successful and you're constantly telling them, no, you need to do it this way, you need to do it this way. Sometimes it's just perfectly fine to say, you know what, that was good enough for today and we'll just keep working on it because what they need to do is learn how to control their center of gravity. They need to learn how to access their mobility. And so that's why being a good coach means sometimes you just shut up and you just let people do some things as long as they're within this safe and, and adequate range that, that you perceive and, and work from where they are. So I don't really have like a set way that I would determine what is optimal in regards to a, a squat or a deadlift. I just kind of let people do something and then start to make the adjustments there. So I hope that answers Mario's question and helps you guys out as well. I have a question off of that. Fire away. So as you said, it, you'll start people kind of where they're most comfortable and then you initially, you eventually want to kind of progress them to what you think's a better position, even though you don't know what optimal is and there's not optimal. Right. So let's say like they start a little bit wider and toes a little bit like more flared out than you would like. How do mm -hmm. we know that that's a bad position to not a bad position, but why can't we keep them there? Well, I, maybe you can. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that, that there's a right or a wrong. I'm saying that you're, you're the, you get to be the coach, right? So you get to determine what you want as an outcome in regards to what the, the client is capable of doing, desires to do, et cetera. So, so that's, that's your call entirely. What I would hope would be the, the long-term goal is to have the ability to do it several different ways versus seeking out a singular optimal because I don't think there is one. So for instance, your, your squat pattern with, the, with a bar across the front of your shoulders should be different than the squat pattern if you put it behind your neck. 
right? If I hold a kettlebell out at arm's length, I'm going to squat differently than I hold the kettlebell close to me in, in, a, in like a goblet squat position. So again, the, the demands of the activity will determine what this person uh, is capable of in regards to optimal at that moment in time with the understanding that there's probably not one singular and I just need to make sure that I have enough variability built into their system because variability is rep more representative of health versus seeking out one optimal, right? We, we don't want to have one, one, one pattern because again, if I move the load, I change the task or I've altered the environment, however you want to per perceive that and therefore the appearance of the activity should change.